Hello everyone, my name is Andy Harbeck and I am a Look Development Supervisor working in the visual effects and animation industry at DreamWorks Animation. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a cyberpunk synthwave scene using Maya, Photoshop, and After Effects. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First off, let's just start by building a custom back alley doorway entrance to like a record store. And I'm also going to be building some custom record store signs for this area here as well. I'm just starting off with basic primitives like cubes and cylinders to build this area. I'll just start extruding different sections off of like the main shapes here to kind of build up the building, the doorway, and kind of the whole entrance here. And then I'm going to build the stairway here. So you have to kind of go up the stairs to go into the door here. So it's going to kind of feel a little bit more like a back alley kind of an entrance. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is create a placeholder for a custom sign that we're going to build. I'm just going to create a rectangle here that represents where the sign is going to be and how big it's going to be. And then we can design that when we come back to it. But want a sign to kind of be over here. So this is going to be like the side of our building here. And then we got a doorway. We'll have a sign up here. This will be the street down this way. And I'll go ahead and create a camera just so I can go ahead and see what the shot composition is going to be so we can start to figure out where everything needs to be. So I'm going to call this my render cam. And then what I'm going to do is set the resolution here to vertical, like HD vertical. So that would be 1080 by 1920. And then also what I'm going to do is turn on the viewport settings so that we can see what we're actually going to uh, have here. So let me adjust this to get the full amount. And then Let's see, usually I like to do a fairly wide angle lens as well, like maybe about a 28 here. So we can get the camera fairly low and then we can, a little bit more here. So what I'm really trying to do is just get a feel for what the composition is gonna be here and see how much space we need to allow for different things. I wanna see some of the sky up here and then I wanna have some more buildings on this side. We could put some lights underneath here. Maybe a light will go right here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create some UVs. And then what I also wanna do is create some bevels on these edges because these edges are just so sharp. It always looks so bad when you just keep an edge that's like perfectly like sharp like these two faces just come together so it's always best to put a bevel on the edges it just helps take the cg kind of edge off of things so so now i'm going to go ahead and create i'm just going to add some bevels to the whole thing here i don't need to worry about those back edges i don't need to worry about this one so i'm going to bevel these these edges i'm going to give them a little bit of smoothness bring them down a little bit and then that might be good i tend to try to exaggerate the edges just a little bit just so i get some nice kind of highlights and when things get rendered they tend to be smaller anyway so i think that'll look pretty nice so i'm adding edge loops around here so that then i can push the door i can extrude the door inwards i'm going to add a little bit of a edge here for creating like a trim okay so now if we now i can extrude this inwards we should have a doorway here now so we're not really going to see through there much anyways but it's good to have something there and now i can extrude this out a little bit to give a little bit of like a door jam and then we can bevel that Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish creating some of these smaller details here for the entrance. 
some of these kind of supports under the kind of overhang here. And then also I'm going to create like a little street lamp here so we can kind of illuminate the wall and the doorway here. So I'm just going to use a curve to kind of create a shape that we can revolve around. And then we can create the pole for the light. Okay, so now that we got a couple pieces built over here, let's go ahead and build a custom sign to replace this here. This is just the stand-in one, so we're going to use the text tool. So this is record store then in Japanese, in katakana. So I'm going to change the font to a little bit of a thicker font. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build this as like a neon sign with the letters vertical. So what I'm going to do, this character here is going to need to be vertical since we're going to do a vertical writing. Let me turn this vertically here. Delete history. So now I can center the pivot and I can rotate this to be vertical. Now I'm going to create a channel for the neon to go inside of. So I'm going to give the edges here a little bit of a thickness so that we can draw the neon then on the inside of these channels. So we're going to draw curves on the inside of all of these letters that loop back around and then connect back up. And I'm just going to do it kind of freehand here. There may be some auto ways to do it, but I find this kind of works pretty well. And then these slight imperfections when it's hand drawn makes it feel like it's more of a handmade neon. I go back and try to straighten things up a little bit so that it kind of lines up pretty close, but I'm not too worried if it's perfectly straight. Okay, so now that we have all of the uh, curves built, we can build the neon tubes here. So I'm going to use Maya's uh, sweet mesh tool here. So I'm going to set the size down and then get a higher resolution on the geometry here, but I'm going to optimize it so that it only uh, creates the spans where it's needed, like on the curvature. Um, sometimes you got to up that a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and create these standoffs for the sign, just so that the sign looks like it's connected to the wall. Um, I'm just going to create some simple little details, some screws and the holders that go into the wall, just so it doesn't look like it's like stuck directly into the wall. So a few of these details are nice just to add a little bit of a connection. I'm also going to create another neon sign over this ledge here. Uh, it might get cut off a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just going to draw this sign freehand again. It's going to say records. It's just going to be like a single kind of neon outline in kind of like this retro kind of style. And then where the O is, of course, we're going to make something that looks kind of like an album with some kind of lines through it. And then again, once we have all the curves made, we can just use the same technique to extrude the tubes along the curves. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate that center record from the record sign, and then I'm going to make a new sign here that's going to kind of stick out from the wall. It's going to be kind of a, like a hanging sign, and it's also going to say record store, and then we can add some extra text to it that says buy, trade, sell. So this sign will also kind of be one of the main focus points of this piece. So I have a bunch of these neon letters already created and I have them grouped and the pivots centered over each other. So then it's easy to rotate the each letter just based around the center pivot of the sign. That way the letters follow the curvature of the sign in the back. Okay, so then to finish up, I'm gonna use some models from the Kitbash 3D library. I am gonna use the ones from the Cyber District and the Cyberpunk sets. I have some of these that I've customized a little bit where I've added uh, some more fans and uh, modified some of the buildings a little bit. Um, but these models are really awesome place to start from. And so I'm going to bring some of these in here and then I'm also going to set dress in some more details on some of these walls. I'm going to bring in a bunch of these air conditioning fans along the wall. 
We're going to go ahead and use the fans later on to add some ambient animation motion and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and continue adding in and set dressing items on the walls and then adding more stuff a little bit along the ground. Also, I'm going to bring in some signs that I have built from before. They have different writing of Japanese text and, and things like that. So I'm going to add those into the scene as well so that we get the city feeling a little bit more busy here. And then I'll finish it off with some background buildings uh, just to kind of keep the alley kind of going down further and it will kind of disappear into the fog. All right, that finishes off all the modeling that we need to do. We've got everything set dressed and ready to move on to the next section. In the next video, I'm going to cover texturing and shading using Maya and Photoshop. And in that video, I'm going to show how to create a triplanar projection that you can apply quickly to many different buildings. And then also show how to create some of the sign details in Photoshop. All right, I'll see you in the next one.